welcome to the From the Shadows podcast. I am the producer, Jason Lewis. I would like to thank you for tuning in to the From the Shadows podcast. And without further ado, here is your host, Shane Grove. Hello, everybody. This is Shane, the host of From the Shadows podcast. And we'd like to welcome you to this week's episode, um, which was a very, very uh, enlightening uh, episode about a topic I think we all all like, uh, especially here at the at the podcast. If you are a fan of the show, The Curse of Oak Island, uh, I think you're going to enjoy this podcast. Um, Kim joined us this uh, on this episode, and uh, well, I guess you're just going to have to hear what she has to say. I don't want to spoil it and make you make you turn it off right now. So uh, before we get started, Judge. I think there was something you want to talk about. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to Elisa, who has recently joined our team as a investigative field researcher. She uh, did a presentation at the Bucyrus Library yesterday on ghosts and haunts. Uh, had about 15 people. It was a, it was a good talk. Um, go uh, listen to our podcast with Elisa, and you'll find out some good background story on us. And we can't wait for her, us for her to join the team. Jason, I think you also have some uh, news you want to share with our listeners. Yes, we've been asked several times about can we be able to listen to your podcast on YouTube. And uh, up until recently, we have not been on YouTube. But um, we've rectified that situation at the request to make things convenient for our audience. So you can find us on YouTube. Uh, click the link off of our Facebook page or in the After the Shadows, wherever you'll see it being advertised. Uh, so we're probably not indexed yet because we just set this up last night, actually. But um, we will have a lot of uh, short videos that we're going to put up from investigations as well as uh, we'll have the podcast, it will be there uh, on a weekly basis, and some other behind-the-scenes stuff that we're going to throw out there just to keep you entertained. And it's very important, um, and I know if you listen to other podcasts and stuff, people are asking you to go subscribe, to go rate, uh, and that is very important. Um, it kind of gets you moved up in the standing, so to speak, and makes you more visible to uh, people that are searching for uh, what we're talking about, such as this episode, we're talking about Oak Island. So we're hoping that if somebody's searching the title Oak Island, they're going to be able to find us easily. Um, so to help us grow, uh, make sure you go to the YouTube channel and subscribe to that channel. Tell all your friends. Make sure you go to our Facebook page, uh, From the Shadows Podcast, uh, like that, and then go to our After the Shadows forum page on Facebook and join that. And it'll keep you up to date on what's coming up in the uh, future episodes. Uh, it'll allow you to interact with other fans of the podcast. Uh, you know, we've got some really nice messages from people that are listening to the show. And, you know, that's kind of, that's why we're doing it. We're, do we do this show? Because we all love the subject matter. And we know that uh, as we've gone along, there's a lot more people that have experienced uh, things that go bump in the night or stuff that's from the shadows, so to speak. And they want a place to talk about it. And feel free to message us uh, privately uh, through our Instagram, through our Twitter, there's, there's so many ways to get a hold of us. Go to our website, which is from the shadows podcast dot godaddy sites dot com and get a hold of us. Uh, we want to hear from you. We want to hear about uh, topics that we can touch upon in future episodes. So it's really important. And, you know, sometimes you may get sick and tired of hearing us say, <laughs> go subscribe, go like us. But it is, it is important to do very that. Very important, very yeah, important. It's very important to do that so that we can keep uh, doing this because we, we know we have people that uh, look forward to this every week. Uh, why? I don't know. I, you know, 
Because they have the same likings that we like, and they want to understand and be unexplained. So, at the very least, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Everybody has has their own passions, and, and I've had the, the opportunity to meet a lot of people that have the same passion that, that our listeners do about cryptics and, and ghosts, monsters, etc. So, uh, subscribing to our channel will allow us to reach out and touch more people to learn about more experiences, and we can share those stories with you. There you have it, from the judge. Yeah, so this, so this week's, uh, or tonight's episode that you're going to listen to, is kind of exciting for us, is because this is the first time we are interacting or crossing over with another podcast. Uh, and Kim uh, from the Booze and Bourbon podcast is is great. And and I, you know, you'll listen once you hear the episode. She'll tell you how to go find them. But I think all you're going to have to hear is how great she is at telling stories and how knowledgeable she is on not just Oak Island, but various other things. And so, so take a listen to the episode and then follow the directions and go, uh, go check their podcast out. So before we get started, we're going to have a word from this week's sponsor, and then the episode will begin. Thanks. We here at From the Shadows podcast have an exciting new sponsor, Evil Spirits Mash Liquor, with a very limited Halloween run only available from the trunk of Jerry's car. Judge, what do you think of your first taste? Let me roll it on my tongue. Oh my God. It tastes like candy corn soaked in gasoline. Jason, what well, what do you think of your first taste? Well, it smells not bad. Let me let me give let me give it a hit. Oh, oh my god. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> He's getting sick. Uh, uh okay, uh well there you have it. Uh, oh my god! Grab your bottle of Evil Spirits Mash Liquor, a very special Halloween run before it runs out. Oh. Guys. We, I think we sent a bottle of this already to Jen and uh, Kim at the Booze and Bourbon podcast. I, I pray don't God, drink it. I pray to God they don't drink it. Oh, okay, okay. Are we still on? Oh my God, we are still on. Hey, enjoy, enjoy a bottle of Evil Spirit Smash the Liquor Halloween Run. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's begin this episode. Welcome, everybody, to the From the Shadows podcast. This is your host, Shane Grove, this morning, and I am with the judge. Good morning. Jason, the producer. How's it going? And our very, very special guest, uh, our first international guest. Would we call her international? Um, Kim Mosier from the Booze and Bourbon podcast. Kim, welcome this morning. Thank you so much. So, Kim... um, I am a big fan of your podcast. So Thank are the, you. so are these other guys. We're, but the the real reason that you're here this morning, and we're just going to jump right into it, is the last episode you guys just put up on Friday was a Oak Island themed episode. Okay, so we don't want to waste Correct. any time because we know you're on a time schedule this morning. So tell us. How how you got so involved in the whole Oak Island uh, sure. mystery? Yeah, there. so when I was young, um, I started to read books about Oak Island, and I was very fascinated by the story. Back then, that would have been in the 80s. There clearly wasn't this whole TV show and dig going on. Um, pretty much all the work on Oak Island had been stopped at that point. So I'd always hoped as a child that somebody at some point would come along to really find out what was at the bottom of that money pit. So it always intrigued me. And I guess it also comes in handy that I really only live 10 minutes away from the island. So driving by it and boating by it all the time, there's always questions going on in my mind, like, when is this dig going to start happening? So when I found out that there was a show and that the dig was going to actually commence, I was pretty excited. So so how, how long have they been actually, like the current, I think most everybody that's listening 
is really familiar with Oak Island because of the TV show that's on the history. Well, channel. I think there's probably a lot of people are familiar that the show exists, but yeah. could you, Kim, could you just give us a, a brief background of what Oak Island is for, the, for our listeners out there that, that have no background? Sure. So, well, the show started up about uh, eight years ago, seven or eight years ago, actually. And previous to that, um, the Lagina brothers, who were very involved in the show, the show is basically a based around the two of them, they had a meeting with landowners, uh, Daniel Blankenship and his son, David Blankenship, back about 14 years ago. So I guess that's kind of when their presence started on the island. But back in 1795, uh, reportedly three or maybe four, there could be a fourth, um, young men stumbled across Oak Island and they were lured there because of these very strange lights. So they went over to the island and found a huge depression in the ground. And above the depression was a large oak tree with an old block and tackle. So they started to dig. And when they dug, they got to about 10 feet and they came across a platform of logs. So continually over, I guess, the course of almost 10 years, uh, a dig happened and they got down to about 90 feet. At every 10 feet, they came across another platform of oak logs. And when they got down to 90 feet, they found a stone, a very flat stone that was, um, it had inscripted this language on it that nobody could really understand. So they've had it um, sort of ciphered. And from what they can tell, they think, but it's up for speculation that it says 40 feet below, 2 million pounds are buried. So from then on, people have been trying to figure out what is at the bottom of this pit, but it's been very difficult because there's all of these flood tunnels that keep coming into that money pit shaft. So it's been making it nearly impossible for people to find what's really at the bottom. So they, so it's been about 14 years ago then that the current, you know, what the, what the current TV show is based on, that the Laginas and the Blankenships got together and sort of said, well, we're going to take some modern uh, equipment and, and really get in there and do a search that has never been the likes have never been done before. Is that right? So it's been, exactly. it's been about, so, which before we get too far, which is one of the questions I really had and, and watching the show. So, so describe from, for somebody that's never been out there, like what Oak Island looks like from, um, you know, why, why is it, is it situated in such a place that, uh, makes it right on the roof from Europe before you get to the to the mainland of North America, that people would supposedly this would be a place where people would supposedly want to bury treasure, and you know, how long has the has the causeway been there? That sort of thing. Like, so what does it look like, and how has it changed over those fourteen or fifteen years that they those guys have been on the island doing what they're doing? A whole lot has changed in regards to how it looks. There is now a causeway that was built sometime in the 60s that attaches it to the mainland, but it's about 140 acres. And if you look at it from an aerial view, it really is not very far off of the mainland and it's in the shape of a little elephant. But what's interesting about it is um, people who are into connecting ley lines and that sort of thing. It, it appears that it's very close to a ley line and there's also quite it's quite a lot of significance around a surrounding area called New Ross. And there are definitely ley lines running through New Ross, but New Ross uh, has this very large river that goes through it called Gold River. And Gold River actually comes out right next to Oak Island. And geographically, I wouldn't say that it's anywhere near a route on its way to Europe. It is quite sheltered in a bay called Mahone Bay. And actually, Mahone Bay has 365 islands in it. So... Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of us that are from the area question why Oak Island, Um, but it just seems that there's a lot of sort of ledges and things around the area, and it's known that there's a lot of shipwrecks around the area, too. So I don't think it was an easy spot to access, especially if you didn't know where you were going. Okay. So, So in other words, Oak Island is the, like the needle in the haystack in Mahone Bay, then. Like, it's the one place that maybe people wouldn't be easily able to uh, access and and go and find what what's there so so if you go back to 1792 i mean it would be such an obscure place that 
it almost would be impossible to find. But but they're talking. I mean, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they've they've determined that people have been visiting Oak Island since the 1100s. Right. I mean, so they believe so, yeah. 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 Well, well, one of the, the stories that intrigued me mm-hmm. and, and about it was not that there is some you know large cache of Spanish gold doubloons and there's treasure. The uh, the, the Knights Templar theory was the was the angle that always fascinated me that the that the Knights Templar the the remaining Knights Templar escaped Europe, came over, and, and that possibly the Holy Grail uh, is buried down at the bottom of that pit. That's the, I think that's the part that, that fascinates me more than finding actual gold coins or bars. I have to agree with you, and that's a really strong theory. That would then maybe something more than just the uh, ledges around the island and stuff is protecting <laughs> what's... Uh, what well, it, <laughs> if you, well and, and the thing about it is, if you understand Templar lore, the, the Templars were the protectors of the Pope, and at some point in history, the the Pope decided, a la Order sixty six, from Star Wars, to kill <laughs> off all the Jedi. <laughs> well, that's because that's because the Pope had a huge mortgage that he took out with the Templars, <laughs> because the Templars were known as the first banking uh, system, so to speak. And I think everybody was probably, in one way or another, beholden to them. But there's actually, there, there's, and, and I don't want to get too off, uh, but, but there, there, there's yeah, multiple you do. stories. Don't, don't lie. You do want to get no. way off. Okay. There, there, there's multiple <laughs> stories about uh, people seeing three Knights Templars uh, with something that Grail esque um, after, say, Order 66 happened, and that uh, they were trying to escape Europe. With with certain treasures, certain artifacts. On so, Friday the thirteenth, or yeah. something. I mean, that's when they yeah. all look. So so yeah. So, so coming to well, we know you know the Vikings and stuff were over here long before you know the Spaniards and stuff like that. So it's not it's not something that's completely far fetched. But I, interesting theory that, that intrigues me. Well, it, it makes you wonder how many other islands in that bay have. Uh, you know, stuff. have stuff. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I was actually having a conversation with a diver on the show, Tony Sampson, and he said the exact same thing. He said there's likely so many islands here that have treasures on them. Maybe not the exact same kind that Oak Island has, but it's very likely. So is it true, Kim, that uh, on Oak Island you actually have, like, old uh, remnants of uh, just um, – not just Templar symbols, but um, the Masonic temple, the Masonic current day Masonic uh, order um, symbolage. You can find it on some of the uh, things that have been discovered over there on Oak Island. Absolutely. So, um, I mean, from what they've discovered so far, uh, the swamp is definitely a Masonic symbol. It's a perfectly shaped triangle. Um, and then you get into like Nolan's Cross, which are these boulders that are strategically placed throughout the island um, with less than a one degree um, of, of center to them. So one boulder to the next, it's almost a near straight line. Um, so that's interesting. And then there's also um, a stone triangle that was found on the beach. It's later been destroyed, um, but they know the location of it. And... It's funny because the first time I ever went to the island and I was standing in that area, I was actually with a bunch of Freemasons and it was a special Friends of Freemasonry tour. And as soon as the guide started talking about this stone triangle, I looked out of the corner of my eye and I saw two monarch butterflies. And of course, monarch butterflies are a Masonic symbol as well. And so um, when I was at the island just about a week and a half ago, I was up by Borehole 10X and again started to see the monarch butterflies. So it's kind of interesting. That's fascinating. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so Kim, one of the other things that, oh, I, other than the blanket ships and, of course, the Nolans, uh, who else uh, – in the present, in the in probably the last 50, 60 years, who else, like, is there other people that own parts of Oak Island right now, or was it just the Nolans and Blankenships owned lots there that the Laginas kind of uh, 
uh, got together with. Well, the Laginas do own the majority of the island right now. Um, so the Blanket Ships still own parts of it as well. They uh, will actually David and his wife still live on the island. Um, but there is one other guy. His name's David Young. He owns one lot on Oak Island. I want to say it's lot number nine. And um, he, throughout the years, created such a wedge between the Blankenships, Nolans, and himself that he doesn't actually have access to use the causeway to get over. So it's been reported that he's gone to his piece of land over 4,000 times by boat. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so, so he has no use for anything that's going on. You, they've never been able to check out his lot and see if anything's on there. Is that what you're saying? Oh, you, uh, can, you, can you repeat that? You broke up. I cut out a little bit, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. No, I just said exactly. No, he, he doesn't. Uh, I don't even think he he respects what anybody's doing on the island and says it's pretty much all a hoax. Really? So that means he's hiding something. <laughs> maybe, Possibly. Maybe. Well, that's, well, that's exactly what you would say if you did not want I mean, somebody exactly. to come here. That is it. the plot to every good Scooby-Doo. Well, either the guy. <laughs> he just wants to be left alone. You know? He wants to be. He's just not a team player. But he can't be left alone if he can't get there other than by boat. So, wow, that's it. That's okay. That's interesting. Um, it is. So does, so does uh, other than Dave Blankenship, does anybody live there all year round? Like, well, no. Like, um, so Fred Nolan, who passed away just, I don't know, was it three years ago? Um, his son, Tom, and his family use Fred Nolan's home often, especially throughout the summer. Okay, so and I and not to give too much of your recent episode away, but it, I I heard the one story about Fred having a supernatural encounter and basically saying he was never spending another night on Oak Island. Do you want to? That's right. Yeah. Do, do you remember that story that you can give it to? Us I a sure do. Bit? Okay, <laughs> tell tell us the story so so the so our listeners can see what uh, what else is going on on Oak Island. Yeah, so Fred Nolan was actually a surveyor by trade and firmly believed that a lot of the treasures could be found or keys to the treasures could be found on on the island instead of digging. And uh, he was out surveying one day and there was a murder of crows and they kept following him. It almost sounded like they were mocking him in every move he sort of made, like they were laughing at him. And he got really creeped out by that. And so as time went on, they still wouldn't leave him alone, and it started to get closer to dusk. Did you, what? What was the last part you heard? Uh, that they started follow, following him around. Yeah, the murderer crows started following him around. Yeah, so they started following him around, and it was like they were mocking him, and he could almost feel like they were laughing at him. And as the day progressed, they wouldn't leave him alone, and he started to think, well, maybe these crows are the souls of the people who have passed away on Oak Island, whether they were souls of slaves who did all the work on Oak Island or what, but he was very creeped out by these crows. And um, in later conversations, he also told um, Daniel Hensky that he believed there were both good and evil spirits on the island, and he felt that the crows were very evil. And so that, that day after um, his encounter with the crows, he never spent another night on Oak Island. And he has a beautiful home on the water, but he basically just used it as a workstation and not one to sleep at. Wow. And, and you know, that eerily sounds like every day of my high school life, except instead of crows. Except you were the murder of crows. No, instead of crows following me, it was like girls following me around laughing at yes. every move I made. <laughs> so... <laughs> Well, you know, the, the interesting thing about, about that story, Kim, is if you, you know, if you sort of, if you sort of Occam's razor this thing and you say, well, you know, okay, you know, maybe this was treasure that was hidden by Captain Kidd or Blackbeard or something like that. Or, or, or you know, I think one of the theories is that, you know, British soldiers the, during the Cuban War was able to, you know, you know secret treasure away. The, the crow's follow has no, you know, the... There's no paranormal, really, explanation for that. But if you're talking about something as, as, as powerful as, you know, the Holy Grail being protected and, and harken back to one of my favorite shows, uh, Indiana Jones, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you're talking about something, if, if the Holy Grail is what the Holy Grail really is, 
I can't believe that someone's just going to be able to to obtain that artifact without some sort of interference. I don't know if your face is going to melt off like the like the Nazi did, <laughs> but but it would cause me to pause about saying you know maybe there's certain things that we're not supposed to find. Exactly. Right. We're really not yeah. supposed to find. And, and you like know, the whole Ark of the Covenant. Yeah, like the whole. That was one of the yeah. theories that the Ark of right. the Covenant, but. You know, in treasure hunting was a Dr. Jones says, X never marks the spot. Um, so, you know, is is the the treasure really there or is that a diversionary tactic set up by the Templars and it's actually someplace else? And the, knowing that, that the Templars were going to be followed, the people were searching these artifacts. That is a very good question. It most certainly could be. I just believe that, they, well, they think that there were over 100 people completing the work in a span of three years. So you know there's a lot of work being done to the island. It seems like a lot of work just to be a diversion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the more they uh, excavate there at Smith's Cove, uh, the more unbelievable it is how much uh, stuff has been, you know, how much stuff has been built there and done there seemingly what hundred hundreds and hundreds of years ago and it could have been easy because they the, right you know they're just going and excavating it now with a big uh crane or whatever excavator and they certainly didn't have that back then so to do all that stuff by hand to build those mm-hmm. to build those uh tunnels and the and the little ramps and the uh, uh Stuff like that. Somehow just, the it Egyptians did it 2,000 years ago, or no, 10,000 years ago. So you're saying the aliens helped the guys on Oak Island? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I, just wanna, I just want to intervene and say this. And remember, like you talk about the pyramids, uh, regardless of who helped engineer the pyramids, along with over here on Oak Island, remember, the important thing is these things were built on the ley lines of the earth, mm-hmm. where this is natural energy flow that goes through our earth, the natural energy patterns. So somebody had to have forum knowledge in order to know that, okay, this is the spot where we want to build it so we can tap into that energy. That's just a theory that I have. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So so um, for those of us that only get to see the show from the, what they what they put on the air, what, what else goes on on Oak Island? Is there... Is there a hotel? Is there a bar and grill? Is there, you know, so what is it, what's it like driving on the Oak Island? There's really nothing on Oak Island other than buildings and uh, trailers and everything for film equipment. Um, there's a, there's an interpretive center actually that most people can visit during the tourist season. I think they just close at the end of November or sorry, end of October. Um, but anybody's welcome to go in there and take a look at the artifacts. And oftentimes, if you go there around lunchtime, you can run into some of the guys on the show. So a lot of fans like to go during that time just so they have, have the opportunity to get their photos taken with them. But besides that, there's really not a whole lot on the island. Um, just on the mainland, though, there is a really big hotel. There's uh, lots of little bars and grills around. So marina at the hotel, which is actually where I keep my boat. So I have the pleasure of looking at Oak Island almost every single day in the summer. Wow. So so how many people, um, I don't know if you know or you could guess, how many people visit Oak Island every year to, to oh, take a tour? That's, that's a good question. I'm not sure. I do, I do know, though, that the tours that happen on the island that you can actually go and walk around with a tour guide – those sell out back in March in about six minutes. Um, so they're every weekend, Saturday, Sunday. I want to say there's at least two tours a day. Um, so there's not a whole lot of people that actually have the opportunity to go and have a tour on the island. Um, but Tony Sampson, who's the diver, he opened up a boating company. It's a boat tour company. And now he operates two boats and he does about four or five tours a day. So he's able to take 10 people out each time. So... I don't know. Run those numbers and see if that gives you any idea. I don't I, know. I can't. I'm terrible at math, and it's way too early. Um, <laughs> so so right. they don't run tours then during the week then because that's, I mean, they're working all I mean, are they there literally working all summer long uh, when it's nice yeah, out? Yeah, well, today is November 10th, and the crane is still in the money pit. Really? Holy yeah. smokes. Holy smokes. 
Yeah, because I mean, I lived on the East Coast for a little while, and I know this time of year it's it's getting a little dicey as far getting as brutal. yeah, as far as wanting to be out there. So yeah, well, the ground's not frozen yet, so I guess they can still do lots of work. Jeez. So getting away from the Oak Island for just a second, what got you into the idea of of doing a podcast and the uniqueness of your name of your podcast? <laughs> Booze and bourbon. Yes. Booze and bourbon. Yeah. Yes. Well, it just, it ties in. I, I feel like there's always been a lot of paranormal activity on Oak Island and where it's a huge fascination for me, as well as my co-host Jen, she's very fascinated with it. Um, we really wanted to do a going to tie the bourbon in but it just so happens that there's a whiskey that's very loved on the island by a man named david blankenship so that that whiskey's crown royal so instead of doing bourbon with our our topic like we typically do we decided to do canadian whiskey gotcha so what is your favorite bourbon well that's a very good question i've got two that are favorites but they're favorites for different reasons so i do love angel's envy i call that my gateway bourbon I got into that probably about six or seven years ago. It was kind of the, the first bourbon that I was like, wow, really like this. Because I was a wine drinker, and that bourbon in particular is finished in port casks. So I thought, you know, maybe I'll like this, and I really did. So that one will always hold a special place in my heart. But as I've kind of progressed my journey with bourbon, I really appreciate Weller Antique 107. It's really rich. There's a lot of great spices. It's mm-hmm. sweet. It just tastes like candy to me. Judge, do you have any comments on the bourbon? Because I'm not a drinker. I, I, I don't drink. I've never drank, so I can't comment. Jason, you guys got any comments on the bourbon? You know, I, I've drank uh, very high-end whiskey like uh, Pappy Van Winkle. Nice. I've, I've had Pappy. Um, and, and you may shame me for this, but still one of my favorite bourbons. Mad Dog 2020? That's not a bourbon. I'm sorry. He is very for this. <laughs> George Dickel. Oh, that's a good classic. Oh, George George Dickel is a very inexpensive bourbon, but it's incredibly smooth. And the reason why uh, it's so smooth is is the way they distill it and the way that you know how many years they keep it. Um, and they even they, they even spell it their whiskey like like Scotch whiskey, because right? Of, because without the of, e, right? Because of how smooth it is. So, um, and, I, and you know it's cheap, but. <clears throat> but but I tell you what, but for flavor, it, it I mean to me, it, it's a lot better than Jack Daniels and Four Roses and things like that. So just because I've sort of, you know, up to my my social status, doesn't mean that I that I don't go back to my your social flavor. status. <laughs> my, You're <laughs> hanging out with us. <laughs> but I will say this much: the Crown Royal, your social status is the uh, same as it was 30 years ago. I'm just telling you. I'm slumming it with you, bro. Okay. But, and uh, that's, the, that's the cool thing about bourbon, though, is there's so many different price points, and everybody has their own preferences. And it's funny that you, you mentioned Pappy Van Winkle because Weller 107, the one that I really enjoy, they call it Poor Man's Pappy because it's essentially made from the exact same bourbon mash bill as um, Pappy Van Winkle, and it's made really? by the same people. Really? Hmm. Yeah. There, there's also a bourbon, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, called Old Medley. And I don't really know if they make no, it. No, I haven't heard that. It's it's really, really good. Sometime if we ever come up to Oak Island to take a tour, I'll bring a bottle of old men. If I can get it across the border, I'm not sure I'm allowed to. to <laughs> you can. I you can, can bring it in. You're the judge. Just wear your robe and hide <laughs> under the robe. I have no <laughs> sway with the Canadian Mounties. <laughs> well, that right. sounds like a deal to me. <laughs> well, well, Kim, um, we want to thank you so much for joining us this morning, uh, just giving us a little taste of uh, Oak Island. And, uh, you know, I think people are, are going to get a good view as to what you and uh, Jen do on your podcast. I think anybody that enjoys uh, a couple of uh, ladies talking about bourbon and talking about the supernatural will... Uh, will love to uh, check you guys out. Now, I don't want to put you on the spot, but you and I okay. have, dis- have discussed the Would You Rather section of your <laughs> podcast, okay? And I just want to mm-hmm. say, first thing, thank God Jen is not here this morning because her, her <laughs> Would You Rathers just totally scare me. 
Okay. I know. They scare totally. me too. Every single time that she asks me a question, I want to crawl underneath the desk. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I don't know. Did you did you prepare a would you rather question for any of us this morning, or or are you going to defer? Am I putting you mm. on the spot on the spot or not? Let me think about this one here for a second. I mean, we want the real booze and bourbon treatment here. Mm-hmm. You may need to edit this out because I have to think. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I have one for Jason. Would you rather spend 13 years in the, sh- in the Chateau d'If, which is the same prison that, that housed uh, Edmund Dantes, also known as the Count of Monte Cristo, okay. or spend a week in a hotel with Jerry? Oh my goodness, that's a tough one there. <laughs> I mean, it's only 13 years. <laughs> 13 years or, 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 or a weekend, weekend with Jerry. With Jerry huh? weekend with and the whippings aren't that bad. <laughs> oh my goodness. By Jerry or at the hotel. At the, at the oh, Chateau oh, D. Well, I had to go on an overnight uh, investigation with Jerry down in, uh, in Kentucky, Kentucky at the uh, Rawls uh, Opera House. So I guess I'll have to take the I'd have to take the the Jerry because you the survived the half. Of the, I survived half, half. Okay. so I, I figure I'll I'll do That's that. That's a fair answer. Okay, Kim, we stalled long enough. What do you got? No, no problem. Okay, would you rather spend a night overnight with a psychic on Oak Island in hopes of finding some paranormal activity for yourself, or would you rather have an opportunity to be there during the day? with the crew, and maybe finding a piece of treasure. Judge, you want to go first? I'm going with the psychic. Ah. I'm going with the psychic as well. I will go with uh, going there during the day because the psychics that we have talked to on this program totally freak me out because they, <laughs> only, <laughs> because they seem to find out way more than what I really want to know. So, yeah, but from the but the, the but the theme of our podcast is from the shadows. Don't you want to know what's that's out what you there? guys are for? I'm just the face. Well, I'm just, what's I'm not, for then? I don't know. What, I don't know what Jerry's for for finding out. Things? And I would like. I got to be honest. I'd like to hang out with Rick and complain about the post office. I mean, <laughs> oh, that's, oh yeah, my gosh. that's what I do on a oh, daily basis anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, so Kim, before we let you go here, do you want to tell all of our listeners where they can find you guys at on your social media and uh, when your next podcast is, is coming up? Sure. So people can find us on Instagram at booze and bourbon. So it's spelled B-O-O-S-A-N-D bourbon. You can also find us on Facebook. We have a Facebook page, which is booze and bourbon, the podcast. And Anybody who listens to podcasts can find us on pretty much any platform from Spotify to Apple, Google Play, YouTube, you name it. We're on there. All right. Fascinating. All right. All right. Well, thank you. I just have one question, though. Didn't you want to ask me a question about who put the curse on Oak Island? Well, okay. Now that you put me on the spot. (laughs) Who did put the curse on Oak Island? Who did put the curse on Oak Island? Tell us that. Tell us that. Well, I don't know for certain. It's just, you know, just like all the other mysteries and all the little happening on Oak Island right now. But um, when you go back historically, and if you want to go with the whole Knights Templar theory, um, one of the Knights Templars, Henry Sinclair, it's been reported that he's come over to Nova Scotia, and he reportedly had a very strong tie with the local indigenous people called the Micmacs. And here in Nova Scotia, we have two bridges that connect two of our, our main cities, so Halifax and Dartmouth. And it had also been reported that the Micmacs at the time were very un, uh, upset with civilization happening in the cities. And they said that one local chief ended up putting a curse on if there was a bridge that was supposed to go across the harbor. He put a curse on it. So thinking along the lines of, you know, if there are if there are religious sacred treasures brought here from the Knights Templar, perhaps with Henry Sinclair and him having a very close tie to the indigenous people, perhaps they decided to put a curse on the island together. Now, that leads me to the next question, then the curse. Uh, is it is that the same curse that says what is it, six or seven must die while searching for the 
searching for the treasure or before it's I, found? I think the, the curse is a lot deeper than that. I think that's one element to it. But I, I do believe that that's what's been speculated from a lady who is a psychic. She sort of came up with that idea that seven people must die and that all the oak trees on the island must die before the treasure is found. That's just she kept having all these crazy dreams about the island. And when she got there, that's what she had discovered. But um, it's just one of those legends. I don't know. Is, but I think that when you when you think about all the different types of equipment that have failed on the island and all of the the strange things that happen when they start to get a little bit closer to finding out what's at the bottom of the money pit, I think the curse is pretty big. My theory on that, real quick, because I know you got to go, is that the Grail is supposed to give what everlasting life, yes. right? And if you say that seven must basically lose their life. They're not really losing their physical life. You lose any chance that you would get into the hereafter. That that uh, is, I mean, it's it's more than just hell. You're going to lose your physical body. That that is, and that would be the ultimate curse. When you think about uh, people from that era, they were, you know, they would burn people to death at the stake to save their souls. You know, we're going to kill you. We're going to torture you. You, we're going, you know, we're going, you're going to lose your human flesh, but we're going to save your soul. So for back then, a curse, an ultimate curse, would be that you lost your soul. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and you just hammered home my point of why I would not spend the night on Oak Island with a psychic. I mean, with the, the psychics figuring out curses and... and but then uh, you know. No way. See? Knowledge is power. It is. Yeah, okay. Well, then you guys can... The give great me the Emmanuel Faber once said, knowledge is good. You can give That's me the right. cliff notes on the knowledge. Then. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can be the explorers. So, so well, hey, thank you very much, Kim. And uh, I can't wait for the next episode to come out. And, thank you. Uh, and I will be ready to cringe when Jen asks her would you rather question. And I appreciate you keeping it clean this morning. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Take thank care, you, Kim. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks. thanks. So nice to be on your show. Yep. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen. A final word. Please visit us on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash from the shadows podcast and on our Instagram page at instagram.com forward slash from the shadows podcast. You can visit our web page at from the shadows podcast dot go daddy sites dot com. Or contribute to our Facebook discussion page called After the Shadows. And tweet us on our Twitter feed at twitter.com forward slash podcast underscore from. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to hearing from you all. Until next time, never shy away from the darkness or what may be lurking in the shadows. We are out. Ha 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 ha.